Hello you guys and welcome to today's video. I am so excited to have you here. So today, you already know what day it is. You already seen the title. Let's get right into it. So the first MLM Horror Stories we are gonna read says, Boss Babe tries to sell skinny tea to a registered dietitian to be. Let's see this. It says, hi Deanna. I'm sorry that I don't have the screenshots of this combo. I had to delete them right away because it made my blood boil just seeing them in DMs. A few weeks ago, a girl followed me on Instagram. I didn't know her, but her bio seemed a little boss babe to me. So I kind of knew something was coming. A couple days later, she DM'd me unsolicited trying to sell me skinny tea. She offered a few other products like apple cider vinegar gummies. I was appalled that someone would tell someone that they do not know that they should try a skinny tea. Little did she know, she should have known because it's in my bio, that I have a bachelor's degree in dietetics. I'm currently getting my master's in dietetics and I'm a dietetic intern, meaning I am on track to becoming a registered dietitian. Not only that, but I also have an my bio that I am anti-diet and a H-A-E-S health at every size advocate. I also have interests in women's health and intuitive eating. I responded to her saying, how dare you tell someone that you don't know that they should try your skinny teas? I'm not looking to be skinny, nor am I on the market for a glorified laxative. I would never try your harmful and useless products and I would never join your MLM. She responded and said, no hun, they aren't dangerous, they're all natural with a whole bunch of emojis. It blew my mind the audacity that someone could have to want one, try and sell a nutrition supplement without having any knowledge or education in nutrition, and two, to advertise it as skinny tea. I have had a very bad relationship with food and disordered eating in the past, but luckily I'm past that and have my background in nutrition to know not to buy this or be discouraged that someone would try and tell me I need to lose weight. I worry about the other people that she sends this to. I have no idea which MLM, but I'm sure there are other huns sending these copy and paste messages to vulnerable women on Instagram. Let me look it up. Skinny tea. Reminds me of It Works. I don't know any like, I don't think I know any other Emily product that sells like skinny tea. So let's look that up. It Works skinny tea. Dang it. My phone just fell. I feel like It Works is the MLM. Yeah, literally I search It Works skinny tea. People are even selling it on eBay. They really need to get rid of their crap. I mean, there is skinny tea elsewhere. Skinny fit detox tea. Maybe it works as just the detox like coffee. No, they actually have skinny tea. It works skinny tea. The one on uh, freaking eBay is their all day rose flavor, but I want to go on their actual website. It works skinny tea. Where you at? Where you at? Go on It Works website. They brand everything like skinny. Oh yeah, baby. They have skinny tea. They have it works keto tea, it, it works sleepy tea, then they have it works skinny tea and lemon flavor and all day rose. They even have shirts, y'all. You can get a $28 shirt that says skinny coffee addict. You can get another one that says sunshine and skinny coffee. They also have like the skinny wrap and then they have like their skinny brew, skinny cold brew. I, in my opinion, feel that they label everything as like a skinny tea or a skinny coffee in order to get people to think like, oh, this is gonna make you skinny. It's like on certain labels when you go into a grocery store. If you look at a label, like, or not at a label, if you look at just the front of an item, say you see this tea in stores at Target and you see it, you may automatically assume that the ingredients are good, that it's going to make you lose weight without looking at like the label. And that's why it's really important and a lot more people are talking about like actually looking at labels of things because you may notice that it can say, oh, you know, this it has less sugar or something on the front. But when you look on the back, it has a bunch of like different additives. We just never know. So I always recommend looking at the actual label to see what's like in the product. Cause most of the time you can just go get normal tea. Like a normal, just like tea bag that you can brew may have less in it than these do. Okay, next story. It says the uplines who violated my personal information. Oof. It says, hi Deanna, so I wanted to share my story about how I earned, quote unquote, a special lunch with my Mary Kay National Sales Director. I'll refer to her as NSD and director at the NSD's house. So I signed my Mary Kay Beauty Consultant contract and my director made me feel like I was going to succeed and walk the stage at the big event in Dallas as a badass new director. We texted all day every day if we weren't together out handing out roses with goodie bags to random women at businesses, putting said goodie bags on people's doors, harassing, I mean, calling people to set up skincare classes. I use that term very loosely. You know being scummy and making random women feel uncomfortable. 
I was special. Not really, but that's what she was manipulating me and how she was manipulating me to feel. Anyways, there was a quarterly contest if you ranked up. Did a certain amount in sales and completed a daily checklist in call to the hotline. You would get a lunch in with our NSD. I did everything but the sales. It was coming down to the wire. My director had me harassing everyone trying to get sales. I was $500 away. I could do it. No, I couldn't. She manipulated me telling me how the luncheon would change my life. I ended up placing the $500 order, which ended up being $1,000 worth of product, all to change my life and show my team it was doable, even though that was my gas bill and food money. No, I could get ramen, I told myself. I got a shiny Top Gun pin since that was our area team name and the luncheon. Flash forward to the day of the luncheon, I met my director at our studio where we held our weekly meetings and skincare classes. Climbed into her pink Cadillac with excitement because I was spending time with all elite of our area and we were having Cario. She said I was worn out on ramen. We get to the NSD's home. I was kind of taken aback because she always said how big her house was. And this was a smaller home, nice, but nothing like what I imagined. Also, it was only my director and I there, no one else. As we were eating, NSD's asking me stuff. The one thing that stuck out to me was this. So she said, the MLM or the NSD, the upline said, when you become a millionaire, how are you going to take care of your mother? Pay off her debt, buy her a house. I know how much she's been through leaving a, oh hell no she didn't. I know how much she's been through leaving an abusive relationship, being a single parent. I was speechless because I had never discussed my why with anyone in detail. I kept it in my personal journal, in my bag, for my eyes only. My mom's story was private and not mine to share. I always said my why was to help my family. Alarms went off. I asked her how she knew about that and she said, oh, the director told me. I was livid and hurt. She didn't know that from me telling her because no one in Mary Kay had been told about that. Played it off and said, whatever my mom wants as I held my tears back. Not because I want to take care of my badass mom, but because my private stuff had been gone through. They played off that. My director sitting there shaking her head, yes, smiling at me as the NSD did the same subtly. I felt like I was under attack and started, oh, and started having a panic attack, but kept myself under control until we left. Back in the Cadillac, I asked the director how she knew about my mom. She was adamant I told her, I assured her I did not, and asked when she read my journal. She denied it and kept on, but I knew the truth. I keep my family stuff close to my heart and tell no one about it. We got back to the studio. I got in my car feeling defeated and used, drove off down to a park and absolutely lost it. After a few days, I canceled my trip to Dallas with Mary Kay, got my team together for lunch at my house, and told them all what happened and that I could not be with a company like this. I offered them that if they wanted, they could have whatever inventory I had for free. Only one stayed with the company and took inventory from me. I canceled my beauty consultant contract that day. To this day, my old director still invites me to different unit activities. They do like amusement parks, rodeos, etc. She even reached out to me after my sister died, like within days, saying she was sorry and asking if I wanted to go to a director debut. I leave her on red, never reply. I took all the ammunition away they were going to use to manipulate me years ago, and I will not fall victim to them ever again. They can kick rocks barefooted. Keep up the good work. That just shows that like some of these uplines will literally go through your personal bullet belongings like I just couldn't I could not be that person now clearly if someone tells you your their why and they tell you their story it's still not your place to like tell somebody else like a story like that about someone who has a mom that was in an abusive relationship and struggles or did struggle is like not your story to tell somebody else and it's just like such a breach of trust even if you tell someone like say I tell my best friend a story I don't know about my mom and then she goes and tells like freaking Sally and Sue. Like Sally and Sue don't need to know. If I wanted Sally and Sue to know, I would tell Sally and Sue. Ah, oh, and she didn't even tell the upline. Like the upline went through her belongings. How dare you? Like go through someone's belongings, read their journal, and then go to your upline, the NSD, the person like at the tippy top, and then tell them what you found out in this journal. And then they use that against this individual. Disgust. So the next one is a, oh, it says MLM, a short 
Wait, what? A short film about an MLM horror story. Is this like a video? Wait, what is this? It says, hey Deanna, thank you so much for all you do with educating about MLM. I feel like we are best friends because I watch your videos all the time. This is not a direct horror story, but I thought you and maybe your subscribers would enjoy my friend directing thesis short film from college called MLM, which is about an MLM horror story, I guess. You can mention my name and share this film if you would like. It's three and a half, we're watching this, three and a half minutes long. I edited the film before really knowing about MLMs and now I'm a proud anti-MLMer with the director. Synopsis. The story follows Jill as she meets up with her high school friend, Hannah. Jill is enjoying herself until she realizes she's gotten herself into something she never intended to get into. No flipping way. This was sent to me. Oh, and I'm not gonna blow the faces cause it's like a short film. started working on my master's, so what about you? <gasps> I'm so glad you asked. Actually, I just became a consultant for La La Leggings. It's like owning your own company. Oh, cool. Have you ever considered? No, I don't, I don't think that. Oh, know, just it. think about it. Okay. And this is the master bedroom. We're just finishing decorating. Oh, wow. Oh, the boyfriend and I went to Punta Cana last summer. I wish I could go back. I was working the entire time though, even on the beach. <laughs> I mean, don't you wish your office could look like this? Uh, it's beautiful. I mean, your office could look like this if you joined my team. I, I Let's get on with the tour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Me too. We haven't seen each other in years. Yeah. Time just always gets the best of I us. Know. <laughs> you know, Lala Leggings is a group of like minded individuals. Oh my God. It's so much easier to socialize when your co workers are your friends. I mean, I'm just trying to help you out. I did see that your Facebook status says you are unemployed. I'm finishing my master's degree. I, I saw on Facebook I'm not into your pyramid scheme. Um, no, 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 it's not a pyramid scheme. It's a network of like-minded individuals. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not like you. Think of that student loan debt. Four years of undergrad and now you're working towards your master's? I can't imagine what paying off that debt is going to be like. Well, I mean, when I graduate, I'll be making more money. So what are you can... getting your degree in again? Psych, right? <laughs> that market is saturated. I mean, these babies practically sell themselves. Work from home. Make your own schedule. Financial freedom. Join my team. La La Leggings is a group of like-minded individuals just like you and me. It is so great because your colleagues are your friends and you never have to leave your house. Also, I saw on Facebook that you're unemployed. I think it might help if you <gasps> join my team. No! She got in it! No! First, okay, I'm dying. That's one of the best things I've seen this week. I'm like refreshed right now. First off, the, the whole when she showed the picture, the whole thing like, oh, went to Punta Cana, which is actually like a trip a lot of these MLMs go to, like the location. But she was like, I was working all the time, even on the beach. And that's literally what like a lot of people who are anti-MLM talk about, where you go on these trips and it's like the trip or a trip or a vacation is supposed to be a time where you can like let go and not work. Now I get if you do own a business, maybe you have to like call or maybe someone who is running your business back at home may have to like give you a call or whatever to like update you about something or ask you a question, but you should not have to work a whole time you're on a vacation. So that part got me, I was like, there's no way they put that in here. There's no way, it's, it's just so good because it's so true because they're taught that this is how it should be, right? They're taught that like when you're in an MLM, you should work 24 seven and it's a blessing to work 24 seven. 
which is like very weird now that I look back on that like even when I was in Beachbody it's like very weird so that was hilarious I wrote down the whole Facebook says you're unemployed like the person essentially did the whole like online stalking <laughs> to see if they were available or like what they were doing and lo and behold this chick was like literally going for a whole master's doing a master's and working at the same time I give it up to people who are in graduate school and working like an actual like full-time job now part-time I, I can understand because it's part-time hours but people who are working like 40 plus hours a week and getting your master's very difficult so this person's doing a lot for herself she doesn't need your MLM she's getting a master's in psychology uh that was great what did you guys think down below again I didn't blur faces because it's like a short film I think it was meant for me to like actually show it but that was amazing that was great loved every moment the ending sucked that she got sucked in but still loved every moment of that <laughs> So let's move on to the next. Okay, so this one is an emblem horror story, but someone did email me this and I wanted to bring it up and see if you guys wanted it to be in a video. But someone emailed me and said, Hi Diana, if you want more content, you could file complaints against the more influential boss babes. So this person said, this is my emblem horror stories like email. So that's why I want to talk about it here since we're here. It says MLM participants are considered independent contractors, not small businesses. Therefore, they don't qualify for small business loans from the SBA. And they sent three links. So what's been going on recently if you guys keep up with like MLM news or whatever mlm reps at the tippy tippy top have been taking out ppp loans and if you guys haven't heard about the ppp loan situation i'll try and link some videos down below i know a certain youtuber was talking about family vloggers taking ppp loans and stuff like that so it's been going on where people have been taking ppp loans but the problem is you're not allowed if you're in an mlm most of marketing companies and stuff it has been shown they are not allowed to take ppp loans so this person sent me a couple links about like the loans approved and all of that stuff how many loans they sent me a bunch of like resources but I was really curious if they sent me a link that had anything to do with the rules about the MLM yes okay so right here it says does your industry qualify for the SBA loan and will you benefit so the SBA loan if you actually want to hear it it says the top requirements for SBA is that your business be for profit and mainly operate within the United States which includes a large swath of business entities eligible for funding SBA loan approval is easier in certain industries than in others but ultimately SBA loan approval will be determined by the circumstances of your specific business as well as your lender's opinion. So it says, that being said, there are specific industries that are absolutely and will not qualify for the SBA loan. So don't even try to find alternative lending things. So if you actually go down, it's things like gambling, government owned organization, illegal firearm, but here they go. It says permit schemes are multi-level marketing schemes. MLM participants are considered independent contractors, not small businesses. Therefore, they don't qualify for small business loans from the SBA. Okay, and the big PPP loans that were taken were with the whole COVID situation. If you're actually wanting to look into it, you can look it up, but there was this whole like, SBA Payback Protection Program, PPP, that's what the PPP loan is standing for, where it's an SBA backed loan that helped small businesses keep the workforce employed during COVID. So when COVID first happened, a lot of businesses weren't getting, you know, what they needed, like actual people coming into their restaurants and things like that. So they were allowed to get PPP loans. People were allowed to apply for it. And what it could technically do is say I owned a business with five workers, but because of COVID, I was having issues paying them because we weren't getting as many sales or maybe we had to close down our actual like office because COVID made us all stay home. If in that scenario, I wanted and needed to keep my five workers like still getting paid, you could essentially apply for that. It's to help keep your people employed during the crisis. So because of that, people have been finding out that MLM reps were taking their LLCs and they were applying and some were getting approved for actual amounts amounts of money. I just thought I'd bring this up towards the end of the video because this person sent it to me and it was like the next email, my MLM horror stories. And I, I personally thought that it was really interesting and a conversation that we could have. So this person also sent me, oh my God, so many sources for people who send me things like this. Thank you so much by you guys sending me this. I'm able to find things quicker, learn about things quicker and stuff like that. You give me a lot of good sources. So if you actually go on the SBA site, it tells you how you can submit a complaint if you want to report fraud and things like that. And there's a whole video that they have about SBA 
a fraud. So if you guys want to check all that out, I'm going to link all of these down below. That's going to be all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know the end was like more so me just going through an email with you about the PPP loans. So yeah, I will leave some sources down below for you guys. But don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Comment down below. I would love to chat with you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll just see you guys in the next one.